from floods to earthquakes to rivers turning blood red overnight, China is facing natural disasters of biblical proportions. Is the CCP finally experiencing divine retribution for their sinister crimes against humanity? Is their reign of terror nearing its end? And if it is, what does that mean for us? We'll look at all this and more on today's show. Welcome to Man in America. I'm your host, Seth Holhouse. And boy, do I have a show for you today. But before we start, I got to tell you something. Is Biden keeping you up at night? Are you tossing and turning, worrying about critical race theory, Chinese bioweapons, the Marxist takeover of our country? Because if so, have I got a solution for you. When you invest in a brand new pillow or some beautiful Egyptian cotton sheets from my pillow, not only will you get a good night's rest, but you'll be supporting American jobs and patriots like Mike Lindell and Man in America. And you'll be sending a clear message to the commies. They can't rob you of your dreams anymore. So head on over to MyPillow.com and save up to 66% when you use the promo code MAN. Remember that word, MAN for Man in America. You can also call 1-800-985-8966. That's 1-800-985-8966. All right, folks. I hope you're ready for this show. I was excited to do one of these deep dive shows with you. I know I've been doing a lot of interviews lately, and this is the original shows I was doing, these deep dives, exploring topics with you, and not preaching at you, but just walking you through the information that I've found painting a narrative, and it's showing you, and ultimately you can make a decision for yourself. I think it's safe to say that right now we're seeing that the CCP has had a devastating effect, not just on the poor Chinese people in the country that they're ruling uh, unrightly, but also just the entire world. And so today we're going to look at what's really happening in China. And I want to make an important note here because when I talk about China and I talk about the evil that's happening there, I'm talking about the Chinese Communist Party. I'm not talking about the Chinese people. I I know a lot of Chinese people, and I have the most empathy and compassion towards them because they're the ones living under this totalitarian regime, which we around the world, we're only starting to understand, right? A couple of years ago, a lot of people would look at China and said, you know what? China is not my problem. It's not me. But I think that now we can see it's everyone's problem. Um, So we're going to be getting to that. But before I start, I will tell you, if you want to follow me on social media, I highly recommend following me on Telegram. It's t.me slash man in America. Follow me on Rumble. So today's show is also going to be, it's on YouTube and Facebook. So there's certain topics I'll have to self-censor a little bit. Um, I will be doing a QA and a at the end on Rise TV, but I think we should be pretty safe with today's episode. Also, in the description of the video are all the links where you can follow me, and I've now launched my podcast. So uh, though I do my videos live, like, like you're seeing right now on YouTube and Rumble and Rise TV, uh, after the show, I'm always going to go through and update those videos and put them on my podcast. So I'm on Podbean, Spotify, et cetera. So those links are also in the description if you want to listen to Man in America while you're working or uh, driving or you know shopping for my pillow stuff. So, okay, so let's get into today's show. And I want to start the show with a quote from the Bible. Let me go and bring this up for you. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. This is Romans 1:18. And when I was researching for this show, uh, I just thought that was a very, very relevant quote. And, you know, one thing that I will highlight here is that as we watch what's happening in the world, I think for a lot of people, especially if you're looking at revelations or, you know, when are these, you know, is it the first half of the tribulation, second half of the tribulation, it's very easy to focus on America or maybe to focus on Jerusalem or the Middle East. But I think that we might forget that China is probably one of the most, you know, one of the most, if not the most, especially now, powerful nations on earth. And so I think it would be um, not necessarily ignorant in a bad way, but uh, it'd, it'd be easy for us to not be looking at the fact that this, a lot of what we, you know, you might read about in the Bible or in other prophecies, 
China could be the place where these things are really unfolding. And I'll get into my thoughts about that you know, during today's show and my overall thoughts of China and its role in the, in the end times, which I believe that we are in some stage of that. And I'm sure that you would uh, agree with me there. So um, starting off with that quote, but I want to first open up an article here for you. Let's pull this next one up. And something I came across here, which is the seven deadly plagues visiting China. Now, one thing I'll let you know is that the, I'll make sure I can pop up. There I am. Um, the Chinese Communist Party, and this is how it's always been, really communist in general, they are so fearful of any wrong narrative getting out. Um, so let me see. I see someone saying that the love, Rumble live stream hasn't started. Let me see. Well, one second, folks. Let me just do a quick check here because I want to make sure our friends on Rumble are able to watch us. No, it looks like Rumble should be live. Sorry, folks. I hate to do this during the show, but we got to have our Rumble friends being able to watch us here. So, okay. No, Rumble's working. Okay, great. So I appreciate the, um, I appreciate those of you that let me know those things because you know, this is, you know, not Fox News. I'm not funded by uh, BlackRock and Vanguard. So we have our occasional things that we have to fix. Um, so, okay, back to what we're talking about with China is, okay, um, this is an interesting article here. So the point that I was saying actually is that the Chinese Communist Party, they do not want any bad information to be released about China unless it's very specific. Um, so if you watched my recent interview with Michael Sanger, if you recall, when COVID was first starting, when this pandemic first started, there was a lot of information coming out about Wuhan. Now, I believe, and the author Michael Singer also believes that a lot of that information was actually a psyop. It was intentionally released to get the world to fear COVID so that the world would then follow China's blueprint of lockdowns, mandates, uh, you know, extreme testing and social distancing, and just the whole way they've handled it, right? So I'm, I'm going to dig into that today. Um, but if you look behind the scenes, if you if you know where to look, which you know there's a lot of websites that I can I know where to find what's happening in China, whether it's you know following people on Weibo and you know Chinese Twitter, uh, and actually a lot of this goes back to my days of the media. I used to work with the media companies that were heavily involved with China, so I've been able to you know discern where to get this information out of. And so what I want to do to is bring you a truer picture of what's really happening in China, because you won't get it from the mainstream media, even Fox News. You have to dig because they hide it so well. So this article right here, this is about a year ago this came out. This is on a website called Back to Jerusalem. Back to Jerusalem. And here they say, disaster is hitting China so fast and so furious that it is hard for me to write about it all. Mother Nature often does things that wreak havoc on nations, but what is happening in China does not seem natural. It seems supernatural. Things, there are things happening in China that are so crazy that they could be categorized as plagues straight from the Bible. And so in this article, and they go into detail, which I will be going into details with a lot of these things in the show, uh, in the, the floods hitting China, the plagues hitting China. And this is a big one we're going to talk about is the plagues hitting China. Uh, in here about a year ago, they had some case of the bubonic plague, which the bubonic plague is what up until maybe a decade or so ago, a lot of experts uh, believe that the Black Death, the, the plague that wiped out you know, over 100 million people, I think it was in the 1400s around that time, 13, 1400s, they believe that it was the bubonic plague, but we're going to see what the researchers are telling us now about that and how that relates to China. Uh, you know, fire coming down from the sky, hail big chunks of hail, which oddly look like coronavirus. That's what someone, he said in the article there. Uh, swine flu, earthquakes, um, locusts. So China has been experiencing, I would say, the wrath of God. That's what China has been experiencing here. So if we go to the next article, this is something really important I want to show you. All right, so take a look at this. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but on this picture here, right, this is a, a rock face. And it's not as easy to discern, especially if you don't uh, understand the Chinese language. You can't read written Chinese. Um, but you know, as we're talking about China, what is the theme of this episode is, are the heavens finally 
you know, giving China the due retribution, right? Because, you know, China, since its inception, has just wreaked havoc on mankind. It was the, you know, the great leap forward, the, forward, the cultural revolution, the Tiananmen Square massacre, the, the harsh persecution of Falun Gong, the concentration camps with Uyghur Muslims, the persecution of underground house Christians. They, the, the CCP has been an evil, evil regime. And so looking back and say, okay, is there a divine will is something that is unfolding as it relates to China. So the, this right here, this image you see, let me read this to you. This is a 270 year, million year old stone that bears the words Chinese Communist Party perishes. This is incredible. So in June 2002, a 270 million year old hidden word stone, which they call it, was, dis was discovered in Guizhou, China. So what happened is a crack that formed about 500 years ago in a large stone revealed six clearly discernible Chinese characters, and the characters clearly spelled out the Chinese Communist Party uh, perishes, All right? So, and they had all kinds of experts that went and studied this, and they, uh, they said, look, it couldn't have been done. You know, it wasn't chiseled by man. Uh, you know, nature, or, which I think is God, will give us signs, right? This, this happened all the time in the Bible, whether it was a star or a burning bush, or there would be signs in nature that would show us things. And I believe that if we, if we ask, heaven will show us uh, and, and it will speak through nature. So what happened was this big rock, uh, this rock face in China split off, it fell about 500 years ago, and it revealed these characters. Now, what's interesting is that there, the, I think there were six characters total, and it was the Chinese Communist Party perishes across six, six characters to communicate that. And the last word, uh, the last character was perishes. So this was then reported in all the state-run media, but they, they removed the word perishes. It just they said, oh, these words were formed in the mountain that said Chinese Communist Party. And they tried to pitch the story as the CCP is the savior of mankind and that the heavens have uh, acknowledged that and they've given you know, these beautiful divine words. But the reality is, is when actually the words say that it perishes. So this is just an interesting thing to frame today's discussion about uh, what's happening with China. So I'm not sure if you've seen the blood red rivers of China, but I remember you know, watching uh, you know, the, the Moses movie and seeing that scene when the blood was streaming out into the rivers of um, back in Egypt. And the same thing has been happening a lot in China. Now, of course, this is information that they have tried to cover up. They've tried to make excuses for it and saying, oh, will someone dump die in the river, et cetera. But let me bring up this, this page here for you. So here you go. Sign from God, Chinese river turns blood red. So here he says, interesting, if I was an atheist Communist Party member in China and did not believe in God, I might start strongly thinking about it. You can call it bad luck, deadly plagues, omens, or signs from heaven, but whatever you call them, they're piling up. Now, I've got a video I'm going to show you, which shows uh, in more detail some of these, these uh, scenes of these blood red rivers, because it hasn't just been uh, one river. You know, for the past, say, 10 or 15 years, I've been following these stories of these blood red rivers in China. Uh, it's happened all over the place, even big rivers like the Yangtze River, which is a massive river system. It's like it makes the Mississippi River look, river look like a stream. It's a huge river system, um, has turned blood red. Now, the officials are always very quick to come out and say, well, there is a factory pollutant uh, or, you know, someone dumped some dye in it. But Again, if you go back to the you know, book of Revelations and John talking about this and seeing this, what, even if it was dye or factory, uh, some sort of factory waste, it doesn't change the fact that it is a blood red river. And the fact that this occurred so much in China is incredible. So let me go ahead and bring up this next video here just to show you some of the scenes of this because it's, it's frightening. It's frightening. So let's go ahead and play this here. And there's, there's, the volume is kind of useless in this video, so I'll just talk over it. But just look at this. These are big river systems. There you can see that the, the folks filling up with the water, and they can't fish in it. And people are talking about how there are these beautiful rivers that were clean rivers. And after this happened, they couldn't 
fish, you know, there was poisonous, they, they stank, they had a smell to them. So this is no joke. I mean, look at that. Do you think that that's going to happen from somebody dying, you know, dumping some dye in the river? I don't know. To me, this is something supernatural that's happening. And the more you look into the Chinese Communist Party, and if you look at how they handle these things, um, and this has happened a lot, even with when they're building the Three Gorges Dam, they had all these signs from heaven that they should not be doing that. And actually, a lot of the attitude behind the construction of the Three Gorges Dam, which I'll talk a little bit about today, but not very much, uh, a lot of the, the things that happened when they were constructing it, they, they had this attitude that they were playing God, right? And this is, if you, if you dig into communism, if you dig into the Chinese Communist Party and their approach, now this is communism, it's not just the CCP, it could be whether it was you know, Soviet Russia, uh, Venezuela, it's the communist specter. Right, and this goes back to the origins and, and Marx and his writings. I mean, Mark, Marx, Karl Marx openly declared a war on God. Right, he he declared that he had signed a deal with Satan to literally, as he described it, plunge his I think he said plunge his blood black saber into the soul of mankind. So he declared a war on God. So for the communists, they, their approach is that they are God. And when, any, when there's anything that happens in nature that threatens their rule, their, their dominion over the human realm, uh, they, they violently react to it. It's almost like if, you, you know, if someone that you know, that they're convinced they're the best and they've got the biggest ego. And when someone else is better than them, they can't handle it. And that's the Chinese Communist Party. They had this belief that they are above God. They have this belief that they're better than God. And, that, and really, this is, this is rooted in the whole idea of communism, right? It's just the idea that, you know, through communism, they can create utopia. They can create heaven on earth, right? So whenever these things happen with China, they, they don't want to face it. So these blood red rivers, for instance, I'm sure that behind the, the scenes, they might be thinking, oh, my goodness, this is God's work. Like, we're kind of screwed. <laughs> but out front, though, they never, they never project that. So the blood red rivers, that's just one thing. So another thing that we have happening in China, and this started really, really bad in 2020, are um, locust infestations, right? This is, you know, again, one of the plagues. So this is, this was articles from late 2020, and this is uh, still happening. And this uh, thing is, is that this greatly affected their grain supply for China, which I'm going to get into where China is at with its grain supply and its inability to feed its own people. So right here we go. This is the um, SM, uh, SCMP, South China Morning Post, saying that crops at risk as southern China battles worst, locan, worst locust inf infestation in decades. So, uh, now, it's interesting because this was shortly after the uh, pandemic kicking off. Or, uh, this, or yeah, this is around that, that time. This is August 2020. So villagers in Yunnan province say the impact has been far worse than they feared. And corn supplies are particularly vulnerable at a time when concerns about food security are already increasing. And what they say here is they say that farmers in southern China have spoken of the devastation caused by one of the worst locust infestations in decades, saying the impact was far worse than they could have imagined. They say on each corn plant, there were 30 to 40 locusts, and very soon the leaves were all gone. Uh, Li Yichen a villager from Pakuo in Yunnan province said, the leaves on the bamboo trees in the mountains were also eaten up two to three days after the locusts arrived. He said, when we walked by those trees, we could clearly hear the sounds of locusts eating the leaves, which was really scary. And some people said, if nobody came to kill the insects, they might as well eat us up as well. So, and these are just some of the pictures. If I, I should have pulled some more pictures to show you because this, the plague of locusts, like you, it was a cloud. You couldn't see through it. And again, this is something that had hit China and hit their crops. Okay. Now let's go to the next article here. This is on Zero Hedge, right? I mentioned the China's grain shortages. So this just came out. This was December 28th of last year. Uh, so this is only, only a, about a week or so ago. And what they're saying is that China panic hoards half of the world's grain supply amid threats of collapse. So author Tyler Durden saying, about two and a half years ago, 
we told readers that China was panic hoarding food, which was several months before the virus pandemic began to spread worldwide. Beijing has managed to stockpile more than half of the world's maize and other grains that have resulted in rapid food inflation and triggered famine in some, country, in some countries. So in August 2019, Zero Hedge asked the question, does China believe that we're on the verge of a major global crisis? The communist Chinese government has always been very big into planning, and it appears that they have decided that now is the time to hoard food, gold, and other co economies, uh, other uh, commodities. Fast forward today, the answer is most likely yes. China maintains historically high levels of beans and grains stockpiled at Kafco, COFCO uh, Group, which is a major Chinese state owned food processor. Uh, 310, 310 storage facilities in the northeastern part of the country. And now this article goes into, it explains, gives you some of the more uh, detailed things about their food imports. But this right here is interesting. You can see this uh, graph right here shows you the China food imports by year. And you can see that this is in billions of dollars. And so I think that it was in 2020, they had imported, yeah, right here you go. Um, it says, and so the one thing Beijing cannot have discontent among its citizens triggered by food shortages and or soaring prices. That's why central planners spent $98 billion importing food in 2020, right, which is almost five times more than a decade earlier. And 2021, you saw the same trend happening. Now, what you also see in this graph here, um, looking at this as well, you can see uh, towards the end of these this decade that as China increases these massive uh, you know, food buying, the imports of grains and all the different foods globally, they're the global food prices skyrocketing. And so there's a lot of folks that contribute. You know, obviously, we're seeing inflation, right? In America, we're seeing uh, gas is going up. The price of meat is going up. It's a big deal, right? But, I mean, Biden did say that our 4th of July dinners were what was like, we saved 16 cents or something on 4th of July last year. Um, so, but a lot of folks are saying that a, a big part of, especially the rising food costs, is because China is so aggressively buying food for their country. Now, the question is, why would they be buying so much food? Well, you see here that uh, the author at Zero Hedge was asking, you know, to you know, in August 2019, they saw the indicators coming in. They saw that China was drastically increasing their food, um, you know, their food imports, and they asked. Why would they possibly be doing that? Well, that answer was revealed in you know, 2020 when the pandemic broke out. So obviously there was some planning ahead of time, which I've gone in depth. I'm not going to go into it in this episode, but uh, whether it was my last article I did with, my, or sorry, my last interview with David Singer, or sorry, Michael Singer, or Dr. David Martin before, or Mickey Willis, the, I've, I've covered extensively a lot of the planning that went into what we have seen unfold. Um, I've also gone into, uh, on my YouTube channel, it's still up actually, uh, there's a video called, uh, the thumbnail is Xi Jinping and it says World War III bioweapon. And I've got that and then I've got there's some good uh, interviews with Jeff Nyquist. All of this information points to the fact that China, their country, they are having a very difficult time feeding their citizens. They've known this for a very long time. This was predicted by, I think it was an economist or someone that was uh, even decades ago, just looking at what was going to happen in China with the, the growth of their population, the, uh, the pollution. So China is at a very, very dire place in terms of its ability to, f to feed its own people. And it's only getting worse. It's not like they're inventing you know, new technologies or they're developing new farmland. It's actually that the opposite's happening. With every passing year, they're building more factories. They're converting more farmland into factories. They've, because they became the manufacturing center of the world, especially once they opened up under Deng Xiaoping to the United States, you know, these are back in uh, Clinton era, Bush era, the, you know, they, the strength of China became its factories. And so they sacrificed so much of their own farmland so they could build factories and they could use those factories to lure in the Western dollar, uh, which you know, got us in a lot of ways, it got us to where we are right now. It's why you know, we've seen our manufacturing gutted in America, et cetera. And this is one of the things that you know, when President Trump was in office, 
that I was so proud of him doing was bringing jobs back because we saw so much go over to China. But that's because China prioritized manufacturing over farmland. And so that, but also if you look at how the communist systems work, there's so much bribery at every level, even if at the very top, they wanted to be very strict with their environmental factors. And I'm not talking about climate change type stuff. I'm talking about you know, don't dump cancerous chemicals into the farmland, right? Even if they wanted to have that done up top, you have a communist system is it's built upon bribery and blackmail. And so you might have a local factory owner that's you know, manufacturing toothbrushes that has toxic waste, and he might be bribing the local CCP official to allow him to dump his toxic waste into the river system. And so and that's, I could do a whole episode just on how corruption works in China, which maybe I'll do that one day. But what I'm telling you is that that corruption has led to China just destroying its natural environment. And so they, they don't have the resources, even though China is about the same size as the United States, they cannot produce food. And so if you go back and you look at some of the military texts, whether it was there's a book written in 2015 by the People's Liberation Army or some speeches by the you know, previous minister of defense in China around the turn of the century, you know, around, I think it was 99, 2000 or so, they spoke very explicitly. The Chinese military has known that they will eventually run out of the ability to feed their own people. And so a big part of their plan has always been to colonize America. And again, I've covered this extensively, especially with my interviews, uh, Endgame interviews with Jeff Nyquist, which I highly recommend you watching. But China's plan has always been to colonize America. Now, why would they not drop a nuke or, or you know, drop a bunch of bombs? Because they can't destroy the natural environment that we have. America is a breadbasket. America's ability to produce grain and crops is incredible. God has really blessed America. You say, God bless America. God has blessed America. I think for a lot of reasons, but China's known that for a very long time. And so uh, if you look back at a lot of the early military texts and planning, they knew that a bioweapon was the, would be the best way to take America. And I believe, based upon my research and a lot of the experts I've spoken to, I believe that the release of the virus um, out of Wuhan was intentional. <laughs> That's, I think that if you're watching me, you probably believe that also. But it's also my understanding that it was supposed to be much worse. And I have some research I've found has pointed me to believe that they had hoped that within the first year of that release, that they could wipe out upwards of 100 million people in America alone. So again, the theme of today's show, right? It's, you know, man proposes, God disposes, right? Man plans and heaven laughs, right? So I do believe that, that China, they, they wanted the virus to be much, much worse because their plan was to wipe out a third of our population. And then once we're weakened to that degree to move in with kinetic warfare on the ground, you've probably seen uh, articles or information about Chinese troops being stationed, uh, whether it was the Canadian border or off the coast of, uh, especially the West coast, right? I think there's a lot of things that Newsom did to open the ports up to China because China, the West coast would have become a key place to bring uh, Chinese troops into America and also in Mexico. So their plan, as I understand it, was to uh, you know, weaken us with a virus, wipe out a third of the population, and then use the, you know, basically have their troops move in from Mexico, from the coasts, and from Canada, uh, and basically take over America after we've been weakened with a kinetic war, but not something where they're dropping big bombs and nukes that are going to destroy the farmland because they need our farmland to survive. I think a lot of what we see happening in Australia is a different version of that same plan. They need the ability to produce their own, their own crops, which is also why they're buying up farmland all over the world. So all these indicators show us that China is, they're really in a dire situation right now. Um, it's, it's actually, it's an incredibly bad situation. And this is just, I mean, what I'm telling you is just the tip of the iceberg. So let me go to this article I have here from Gordon Chang, who has great coverage on China. And this was back in uh, you know, early last year saying, watch out, China cannot feed itself, right? So he's, he's making a point. He's saying, look out, China can't feed itself. This is a really big deal. This is a problem. It's like if, if say, you live in a neighborhood and you know, you've got your house and you're, you're taking care of your house and your next door neighbor is an ex-convict that's regularly shooting off illegal guns in his backyard 
and he can't afford to buy food and you've got a stockpile of food, you better watch out because there's one day that guy's going to come over, kick your door down, put a bullet in your chest and steal all your food. Right? That's how we need to be looking at China. Because there is, if you look into different scenarios of uh, whether it's you know, EMP or disaster scenarios or nuclear strike scenarios, um, one of the worst things that can happen is hunger and starvation. And hunger and starvation, that's the thing that will turn even the best men against each other. Um, you know, if a father is watching his daughter starve to death you know, in, in, a, in a very bad situation, he might go murder his neighbor to get food for his family. Okay, so let's look at China as being the ultimate version of that. So let me dig in this article from Gordon Chang who says, watch out, China cannot feed itself. Pardon me. Okay. He says, consider U.S. farmers happy. They are exporting record volumes of products to China. Shipments of soybeans, corn, and pork are bringing smiles back to the American heartland. Again, isn't this exactly the story of how we sold our souls to China? We said, wow, look, you know, manufacturing is a lot cheaper there. I'm making a lot more money, smiling, happy business owner. But when you do a deal with the devil, it comes back. He says, to put it another way, Beijing is effectively acknowledging it cannot feed the Chinese people. Chinese leader Xi Jinping recently made such an admission. Last August, he announced what became known as the Clean Your Plate campaign to end what he calls a shocking and distressing waste, distressing waste of food. Just about everyone saw this effort to get the Chinese people to eat less as a warning for shortages to come. So we start in 2019, which according to Beijing was a very good year on the food front. Now, just a side note here, as I've mentioned to you, China, they're, they're the masters of the art of war, right? Uh, Sun Tzu, when you're weak, look strong. When you're strong, look weak. For them, mostly, it's when you're weak, look strong. So you will always see them. Again, this is, if you go back to the Great Leap Forward or the, you know, the, the, the famine in China, they, when they, they had tens of millions of people that, that starved to death, it was at every level they kept putting forth the idea that everything was perfect. So because the officials at each level were punished, literally punished, if their grain production was, was not what the state wanted, they would go lie and say, yeah, we have, we have more than enough. We have more than enough. Our, our grain stores are overflowing when in fact their people were starving and eating each other, right? So not much has changed. So, so Gordon Chong says, we start in 2019, which according to Beijing was a very good year on the food front. The official Xinhua News Agency in a piece titled China's Food Self-Sufficiency, A Blessing to the World, uh, to World, claimed in October that China was producing far more food than it produced. Again, a gigantic lie because, and again, you know, Xinhua, which is one of their main propaganda agencies, if, if they say that something is red, it's yellow. If they say something is good, it's bad. It's just, it's, it's communist to invert the truth. So the country, Xinhua reported, contained 20% of the global population and produced a quarter of its food. Moreover, Beijing felt it was time to brag, noting China has been able to accomplish with this feat only 9% of the world's farmland and 6% of its freshwater. Xinhua in 2019 was exaggerating, and that became clear in 2020, an especially difficult year for Chinese agriculture. Again, look at the timing of this. We talk about does, does heaven have a role in punishing countries, man, uh, individuals, groups? Are they punished when they go against the laws of heaven? Okay, so in 2020, China got hit really, really hard. So he's saying, it became clear in 2020, an especially difficult year for Chinese agriculture. Floods in the counties south, drought in the north, typhoons in the northeast, and pest infestations in the southwest took their tolls. Disease continued to spread among animals across China. Perhaps the most damaging were the floods. Floods in the middle and lower Yangtze River Basin, Hebei, Anhui, uh, Jiangxi, and Jiangsu provinces. From June, hit rice-growing regions. Floods in Jilin and Heilongjiang in the fall affected the corn and Japon, uh, Japonica rice crops. The corn belt in the northeast was devastated by typhoons, which typhoons are hurricanes. Beginning in 2018 and continuing in 2020, African swine fever also ripped through pork-eating China. 
Paul Midler, the author of Poorly Made in China, makes the case in comments to Newsweek that Beijing in 2020 slaughtered a considerable portion of its pig population in an effort to prevent the spread of COVID-19, not to stop African swine fever as Chinese officials maintain. Whatever the reason, it's clear, he points out, that China lost much of its supply of this food staple during the global pandemic. So again, I believe based upon my research, and I, I always encourage you to do your own research. I hope that you don't trust Maybe you can trust me, but don't take anything I say as 100% truth. Always do your own research. I will always try to give you what I believe to be the most honest information that I have gotten. And I really try to check myself and fact check and research. But it's really important that this day and age, we all learn how to have our own discernment, our own ability to research information. But I do believe that the, the virus coming out of China, the release on it globally, was part of a bigger plan of the CCP working together with the globalists to uh, implement a global communist system. And it's, multi, it's multi-tiered. I think it had to do with the, the digital passports, uh, everything. But I think that the, what you're seeing here, again, China might have had this beautiful plan that they could use to, to bring their system globally, to take down the United States, take down the European countries, to take down the whole world economically through lockdowns and all this. They could have had this the most amazing plan to do this, but here we see that amidst that plan, the heavens are wreaking havoc on China through these natural disasters, swine flu, floods. And in this episode, we're not even going to get into it, but the entire Chinese economy is on the brink of collapse. You know, if, if you are familiar with Evergrande, right? You know, they're the entire, the real estate, there's a massive bubble happening in China. So, and again, this is just covering one portion. If I was going to do a whole series on all the indicators that China is nearing collapse, it'd probably be a three or four hour series, but their financial markets are in very rough shape. They're propped up. There's so much debt. There's so much bad debt being held by the, the banks and the banking institutions in China. It's, it's a train wreck waiting to happen. So back to Gordon Chung, they're talking about the, the food production, right? This is the thing. If you can't feed your people, nothing else matters. If people cannot be fed, that's the quickest way to get people to revolt. And as we're going to see in, towards the end of the show, when I talk about the quit the CCP movement, the Chinese people have had enough of the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese people are a ticking time bomb. And it, again, if, if you start bringing in food shortages, you're going to see riots. You're going to see the whole society turn to turmoil uh, because the people of China, the poor, innocent people of China do not want a communist uh, regime over top of them. And they are actively trying to get rid of it, which we're going to get into that. So going into where what we're seeing happen now. Um, so this is something that's very interesting. And this is more, more current news for you. So if you've been following what's been happening in China, they have, you, know, you remember seeing Wuhan, as I talked about. You remember seeing uh, Wuhan, the lockdowns, everything. Well, China was telling the whole world it got rid of coronavirus, right? That was the whole idea, is that they said, look, our lockdowns were so efficient that you know, even in a city like Wuhan, where we had, you know, I think it was 11 million people, we were so efficient that we locked it all down. We, we welded people into their houses and we got rid of it. But what's interesting is that they're having lockdowns again. They're having outbreaks again. So look at this article I'm going to show you. This is from the Epoch Times, which I highly recommend. Anything China-related, go to the Epoch Times to find it because they have so many sources inside China. Their China investigator reporters are the best in the industry. I, I, I know that. I promise you that. So here we've got, this is, this article is from January 4th. China's harshest lockdown yet tests its zero COVID playbook. So China has this approach to COVID. It's called zero COVID playbook. And it's this idea that they'll do whatever it takes to get to zero COVID, which I'll talk about that in a second here. But as the article states, compelled by harsh COVID-19 measures in China, some ordinary citizens, such as the three they talked about before, have resorted to desperate measures to flee Xi'an, the city where a severe lockdown policy has barred 13 million residents from leaving their homes. Best known as the home to the 2,000-year-old terracotta warriors, the north central Chinese city is reporting that the country's worst COVID-19 tally in more than 21 months. It's posing a headache to the regime in Beijing as it scrambles to gain the upper hand on the illness 
just four weeks ahead of the Winter Olympics, which Beijing has pledged to be safe and grand. There's some good, you know, communist propaganda for you. So the what, we're ha- what we have happening in Xi'an, a, a city of, I think, was it 13, yeah, 13 million people, is that they're now having a lot more cases and they are doing a true Chinese lockdown, right? For us in America, we've had lockdowns. They're not really lockdowns, okay? The pizza shop is closed. Uh, the grocery store is closed. We've still had our freedom. In China, their lockdowns, they're welding the doors shut on apartment buildings. They're closing up grocery stores and restaurants. Uh, if people are caught outside, I've seen terrible videos of people tied to pillars. They're handcuffing citizens to, uh, to staircases if they're caught you know, outside of this. They're being beaten for not wearing masks. Like a Chinese-style lockdown is, it's, I guess, what you'd think it would be, right? A Chinese-style lockdown. So they're implementing this Chinese-style lockdown in Xi'an, which again they are short. They they are just months away from the Beijing or from the Olympics coming. So why would they be doing this right now? There's different theories. There's part of me that believes that that what they're trying to do is that we're entering in the next wave of what they're trying to accomplish. Uh, that I believe they're going to try to be pushing global lockdowns again. As much as I don't like the idea of it, but if you look at the Omicron and all the fear they're pushing, I think that there is an agenda to push us back into the lockdown cycle, right? Where it's it's this, and, and if you look into the Chinese Communist Party, their overall role in COVID, I believe part of the plan was to have perpetual lockdowns, right? So it's lockdown, um, you know, jab, uh, you know, you know, you know, uh, lightening up. Things get better. They lighten up. They remove the restrictions. A new variant comes out. Lockdown again. Then there's the new booster, and then it gets better, and then a new variant comes out. Like I believe that their plan was to have this perpetual cycle of lockdowns and boosters. Um, but I think that their plan is failing because a lot of people are seeing through it. And so part of me thinks that what they're doing in Xi'an, and when I first saw it, I thought, okay, they're putting on a, another psyop. They're putting on another thing where they're, they're releasing pictures or bringing the military in to convince the world that it's gotten bad again and you have to lock down again because if you trace back the origins of the lockdowns, they came straight from the desk of Xi Jinping through Tedros at the WHO, through Fauci, all the, you know, the corrupt medical system, et cetera. Um, but going back to the whole biblical, the seven deadly plagues and the, what's happening being there, there's some other interesting information emerging about what could be happening in China. So let me show you this article. This is from the Vision Times. I'll make myself disappear here. Actually, no, I, I'm, you can still read. So this is interesting. So Chinese military deploys troops as the Xi'an outbreak worsens. This is this article is from about a week ago. Okay. Um, so here you can see they're bringing troops. They've got these full hazmat suits on with backpacks. And, and this is, it, it's, it's getting pretty in, insane here, right? So they've got, now, if you look at this, Okay, let's go ahead and hop in here and read this. Okay, so here's what they say. Authorities report only a handful of COVID cases, but locals suspect the real concern is a rodent spread uh, hemorrhagic fever. Okay, so I'm going to talk a a little bit about what that is. So let's read here. So around, this is in a city of 13 million people. Around 150 medical staff from the People's Liberation Army, the PLA, Air Force, have been dispatched to Xi'an, the northwestern city, Chinese city, that has been in a lockdown for more than a week due to what the government says are scores of COVID-19 infections. So they're bringing these military in like this for COVID-19 infections. Okay, let's dig into that a little bit. So they say, according to social media posts by the state-run People's Daily, Many of the personnel who arrived in Xi'an at 8 p.m. on December 27th were veterans of previous biosafety crises, having arm wrestled the Grim Reaper during SARS pandemic and the original COVID-19 outbreak. Sounds like propaganda to me. A video posted by Chinese Twitter, so Chinese Twitter is Weibo, uh, users shows much personnel in heavy biochemical protective clothing in the streets of Xi'an which is an industrial center home to around 13 million in one of China's most ancient capitals. Again, there's one perspective you can have of this that the, that the Chinese are putting on a show. They're moving their military in there. They're saying, look at us. Um, 
you know, you, you better follow what we're doing because there's this new outbreak and it could be that, what you call a PSYOP, psychological operation. However, locals have questioned the official explanation for the outbreak and lockdown as cases of hemorrhagic fever have been reported in the city. Hemorrhagic fever, which I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not a medical guy, uh, is a viral infection transmitted by rodents, by rodents. So this is a fever. So part of what happens when you get this fever is your blood loses its ability to clot, right? So it's a hemorrhagic fever. So you start bleeding, right? So this causes, literally imagine a fever that causes bleeding. Not good, <laughs> okay? So it goes into this, and this article says, from a screenshot of a text message to a friend from one resident named uh, Wu, Xin Yu, Wu Xin Yu's mother, it said, quote, those who want to avoid COVID-19 do not go to Chang'an district, which is one of the main districts in the city. The hemorrhagic fever in Chang'an is particularly serious, just not been reported. Almost 200 people have been infected. My friend who is a doctor in Chang'an hospital told me that her colleague's husband infected hemorrhagic fever while he was running in the park. He died within a week. It's very scary. Stay at home. Don't go out. So another post said on, on Twitter, you know, on Twitter said, the screenshot of the text message of the conversation said, quote, my child said there are mice in the school. The teacher told them a lot about bacteria. And quote, a sister in another WeChat message group who is working in the hospital said that the hemorrhagic fever is real and patients were full of the sick rooms of the Department of the Infectious Diseases in Chang'an Hospital. So this is... This is serious, right? So let's take a look at this. I want to show you the, this hemorrhagic fear a little bit about it, right? So let's look at, if you recall reading about the Black Death or we think of the Black Plague, right? Which is, they, I think it, it happened around the 13 to 1400s, as I mentioned earlier. And the numbers, I think they said between 70 and 200 million people died. I mean, it was, you could, it's safe to say is a hundred million plus that died from this. And so experts had always believed that this, the Black Death or the Black Plague was caused by the bubonic plague, right? So, but in this though, this is, this came out in 2000, uh, I think this is 2005 or anyway, this is more recent. I mean, you know, all things considered. And what they say though, it says for the whole of the 20th century, it was believed that the Black Death and all the plagues of Europe yeah, actually, so 1347 to 1670 were epidemics of bubonic plague. This review presents evidence that this view is incorrect and that the disease was a viral hemorrhagic fever characterized by a long incubation period of 32 days, 32 days, which allowed it to be spread widely, even with the limited transport of the Middle Ages. And so if you look into the, the Black Plague or the, the, the Black Death, it originally came out of Asia, interestingly enough. So what this information is, is pointing to, and again, I don't know for sure, but it looks like that from the research that I've done, that these lockdowns that you're seeing in Xi'an, um, A, let's, let's draw a few conclusions from this. I don't believe that with the Olympics right around the corner, that the Chinese Communist Party wants to be having a massive lockdown happening and having an outbreak of COVID because all it's going to do is it's going to you know, make people scared of going to the Olympics. It makes them look bad, uh, bad. Again, the Chinese, especially the CCP, they're all about saving face. They don't want to look bad. So I don't think that this will be a plan of theirs to all of a sudden have these massive uh, epidemics spreading. But what you're seeing, and again, you have the state-run media and then you have what the people are saying. And in China, the people are saying that they're hearing of outbreaks of this, this hemorrhagic fever, um, which, as if you trace that back, the experts say, are saying that that could have been what caused the original Black Death. So again, do I know for sure that this is you know, white, you know, kind of terrorizing its way through China? No. But what we're seeing, again, is biblical plagues. We're seeing things that it's like China, okay, China wants to take down the world with the release of their bioweapon. And God's like, okay, we're going to give you the black death. <laughs> so again, I don't, I don't like to laugh at this because this is, it's a serious topic. But um, the Chinese Communist Party is really, I believe, and they have to know it, that they are experiencing the wrath of heaven. Now, I also talked about the Chinese people rejecting the, rejecting the CCP. 
Okay, so let me pull this article up here. This is from the Epoch Times. And this was, I probably could have find a, found a more recent article on this because they cover it quite a bit. But there's a movement that's just called the Quit the CCP Movement. And what this is, is it is Chinese people. So actually, I'll, re, I'll read it to you. So, so far, and actually this was last year, so it's probably even more now, over 383 million Chinese have quit the Chinese Communist Party. So here we they say, um, the basically so three Chinese. This is kind of you know telling the or, the article, the Chinese these Chinese who live in the United States quit the Chinese Communist Party and its affiliated organizations, joining over 383 million Chinese. I think it's closer to 400 million now, who have registered a public statement of withdrawal from the CCP. It says from cradle to grave, Chinese citizens are told to be loyal to the CCP. They are also forced or asked to join CCP affiliate, affiliated uh, organizations. As young children, they are enrolled in the Young Pioneers. In middle school, they can join the Communist Youth League. As an adult, they may choose to join the CCP. This is key. When joining these organizations, members are required to raise their fists and swear an oath to the CCP that they will fight their whole life for the Communist Party, give their blood for the Communist Party, and never betray the Communist Party. And so the, the, basically this movement is a, a process of these Chinese renouncing the Chinese Communist Party. And if you look at different communist regimes that have fallen, one of the key indicators of a regime being close to falling is the, is the people of that regime seeing through it. Right? If you look back at some of the other uh, previous regimes, it was when information started creeping in. Right? So the Epoch Times, they were involved in writing a book called The Nine Commentaries on the Communist Party. And so this book, actually, they had production sites all over China, illegal production sites where people, because it was basically a book that ex exposed the true history of the Chinese Communist Party, because a lot of people in China, they were, they were born into this system. They were, you think our schools are bad here in America, which I agree they're not good with critical race theory and everything like that. But in China, you're born into a system where you're taught just what the CCP wants you to know. And you may never, you may never ever have access to anything but that Chinese communist propaganda. And so what these Chinese did, these freedom fighting Chinese people, they created this book. Right, the the, the, I think the uh, Epoch Times was heavily involved in this, called the Nine Commentaries on the Communist Party, and so this book was distributed all across mainland China, and people were literally, you know, printing off. They, they'd be building these home production sites to print off these books to expose the truth of China and passing them out. And so what that's led to, and this is what the Chinese Communist Party really fears, is this movement of Tuidong, which is which is quit the party. And so all these people now are up almost 400 million Chinese people have quit and renounced the Chinese Communist Party. So this is really, really significant. So now we're nearing the, the end of the hour we have together. I'm also at the end, I will be doing some Q&A over on Rise TV and just also do some discussion with you to hear your thoughts, which is what we do for a lot of these live shows. Um, but to, to really summarize what I see happening right now is if you look at what's happening, let's just talk about America. I believe that so much of the corruption that we're seeing in America is tied to the Chinese Communist Party, whether it's our politicians, like look at Eric Swalwell, right? That's just the tip of the iceberg. And, and again, if you, if you look into the infiltration and the, the subversion of the American government, our institutions, our corporation, big tech, media, all this, so many of these roads lead straight back to China. And so what is I know that a lot of you watching now, you know that we're at war, we're fighting, we're running for local office, we're, we're joining our local school boards, we're sharing information, we're fighting because we know that our country is under attack. We know that there is an attempt to have a communist coup in our country and bring in communism. Well, so many of these ties go straight back to the CCP. Look at Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, look at their ties to the CCP. Is it a coincidence that Trump was so hard on the CCP they had to get him out of there, right? They had, and the one, everything was aligned against him. I think one of the big reasons is because he was so hard on the CCP. He did not back down against them, and he hurt them really, really bad. They could not have him in there for another four years. So if China falls, right, which again, if we look at what's happening, we have all these natural disasters. We have potential plagues, real plagues, not like 
99.9% survival rate type of plagues, real plagues. We have the financial collapse looming with Evergrande, which is just the tip of the iceberg of their financial system. You know, their artificially inflated yuan. Their, everything financially is on the, on the brink of destruction. You have the Chinese people that are you know, rejecting the Chinese Communist Party. Then you have the whole lay down movement, which I won't get into in this show, but where people are refusing to work. A lot of the young Chinese are refusing to work, refusing to have children. So the population in China is, is growing older and older. There's, they're not refilling the population. And they can't just say, okay, hey, we'll get rid of our one-child policy, two-child policy. They've lost it. They've lost generations. So then you're not even talking about the infighting within the Chinese Communist Party. There are potential coups that are unfolding within the CCP. So if you put all these things together, you put all these things together, the fact they can't feed their own people, everything, you can see that they are in the weakest place that they have ever been. And this is, and so I really believe, and this is without getting into you know, more of the deeper revelations, Mark of the Beast stuff, which I'll talk a little bit over on Rise TV because it's a little more censored as it relates to the, the jab. But if you look at all these things combined, you should see that if the Chinese Communist Party falls, a lot of the issues, I'm not saying the globalists won't still keep trying, but so many of the issues that we're struggling with today will be solved because what happens when you kill the puppet master, right? Well, all the, all the people that have the puppet, the strings attached to them, our, our government officials that are controlled by China, it changes. And so this is, this actually, honestly, this is a big reason why I do what I do. And this is a big reason why I focus on China a lot because I really believe that China is the, and again, not the China, but the CCP that the CCP is the enemy of mankind. I believe that if you want to get into more of the biblical prophecy, I believe that Satan himself has, has rooted himself in the Chinese Communist Party to try to use the Chinese Communist Party to destroy mankind, to destroy what is good. And, but I believe that it's actually Satan that's being destroyed. And I believe that things are starting to happen. So there's a lot of things that give me hope. If you know me, I'm a person that, that's usually pretty hopeful. Um, but a lot of what we see happening in China and, and how they're on the, on the brink, that gives me hope. And that's why I think it's really important. Honestly, I think it's very important for all of us in our fight to save America and our fight to save our country, whether you're in Australia and you're trying to help, help protect those in Australia or Germany or wherever you are, the better we can understand the Chinese comedy, comedy All right, can you hear me okay? I'll give you a second to let me know if you can hear me. 
Let's hope so. I think I fixed it. I got to fix this. Let's see. Let me know. Perfect. Okay. So it looks like people are telling me um, audio is okay. Good. Okay, I'm back. All right. Okie dokie. Thank you. All right. All right. Again, I told you, look, we're not Fox News. We're not funded by BlackRock and Vanguard. <laughs> so let me just make sure that we one second to check a few things. Okay. looks like we are back on. Good. All right. So the as I was finishing the last point here um, is that the point that I'm not sure where I cut off. I'll, I'll make a quicker point. The more that we can all understand that the, the enemy of mankind is the Communist Party. Now, again, I'm not taking away from the globalists and, and, and what you call the cabal and all those things. I agree. But if you look at all these roads, so many of these roads lead back to the Chinese Communist Party. So that's why I am focusing a lot on the Chinese Communist Party and what I do. So that is the... Um, Okay, so there we go. That is the that is the end of today's live show for uh, the public. We're going to hop on over to Rise TV because I like to do a little Q and A and uh, one on one behind there. Um, and then I, I apologize that it says that the audio is behind. Um, I'm sorry about the audio being off. So next time we'll get that fixed. But thank you everyone who joined me today. Um, if you want to go join us over on Rise TV. There is a promo code in the description for the video. You can get a free trial. Check it out. I think you'll love Rise TV. Uh, if you want to join, it's 10 bucks a month, but it's got a wealth of great content. We cover communism. We cover transhumanism. We go into human trafficking, but also things that bring us hope. You know, we go into spirituality and God and everything on there. So if you want to join that, it's a Patriot-owned company. It's a way of supporting what we're doing. The description, the link is in the description below. And if you want to get a pillow or a bathrobe or slippers or a dog bed from my pillow and support the super Patriot Mike Lindell, just use the promo code MAN as in Man in America, and you'll save up to 66%. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and deactivate the... Um, those the streams so thank you youtube and rumble and facebook um i really appreciate you being here i really appreciate you being here and one thing is that if you enjoyed this video today please like and share it uh, again if you like this video do me a favor it's, it's the number one way that you can help because i'm so censored by the big tech you know the, the big places where we're reaching a lot of audience youtube facebook twitter i'm so censored so if you send this video to one friend or two friends, it really, really helps. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining.